Sakurai, give us arcade stick support for Smash, for Terry specifically. Fade in and out several times. Several times. There we go. Hello everyone, this is Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited. The Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game was recently honored with five awards at this year's Japan Game Awards. Cool! It's not bad. It's received a great many awards on top of that as well. Each award is very meaningful to me, so I would like to take the opportunity to extend my thanks to all those who have voted and to all those who have supported us. Thank you so much. I see a Neo Geo and a Neo Geo arcade stick. Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. First, we'll start with what the Neo Geo is. This is exciting! It refers to a 1990 video game console for use in arcades and at home, as well as to the name of the system itself. In 1990, the equivalent to the Super NES had only just released in Japan, so if you wanted to play arcade games at home before then, the only option was to play the less polished Cartridges for the Neo Geo the were fucking system. huge. However, with the Neo Geo system, like they were you could fucking play the huge. Of games at home with no drop in quality. 1990 was right around the year that I started working for a game company. Back then, Japan had rental services for arcade games. In other words, you could go to a rental store, rent an arcade game, take it home, and play it. After that, they were sold for home use, but a single game would cost about 30,000 yen. They were fucking expensive. expensive. But if you think about it, compared to playing a game in the arcade 300 times at 100 yen per play, you're getting your money's worth. At the time, some people actually thought this was cheap. I mean, there really are people who've played games in the Super Smash Bros. series 1,000 or even 10,000 times. Nah. Anyway, the MBS, as it was called then, was sold in various places. This is awesome. Machine, it wasn't all that expensive. But they're doing this? Get them on lease. You can tell that this is important to Sakurai. Lots of candy stores having a metal slug cabinet. The home version of the Neo Geo came with this controller. Can you see? It has four buttons. And this is the actual console itself. Here is the reset button. I think it's in very good condition. Big game cartridges. This is the Neo Geo. Just kidding. What the fuck? Actually, this is the Neo Geo X, the portable version that was released afterward. I was about to say, what the hell? Insert it into this docking station and play it as a home console. Beat Nintendo Switch to it. A portable, multi-purpose console. Updated iterations of past systems are emblematic of the Neo Geo. Next, let's talk about what Fatal Fury is. It released in 1990. Oh, we've been through the same this. Year as Street Fighter 2. But this one came later. Fire it launched after Street Fighter 2. Like many of the other fighters, Fatal Fury was often regarded as a title that was developed to capitalize on the popularity of Street Fighter 2. But that's not really the case. Actually, both Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury were developed using the original Street Fighter as a foundation. In fact, the development of Fatal Fury was started by one of the planners of Street Fighter. Yeah, the Capcom guys jettisoned for SNK. I just hear you say, wow. This one is also a multiplayer focused fighting game. In this story, someone named Jeff Bogart is killed by Geese Howard. Geese Howard starts up a fighting tournament in Southtown, which he runs. To avenge his father's death, Terry enters the tournament, which is known as King of Fighters. I mentioned the term King of Fighters, something you may have heard before. Yes, there's actually a popular series called the King of Fighters, and that series was named after the fighting tournament within the world of This makes me feel very good. And Terry Bogart, Sakurai's over here Fatal preaching to all, all the, games in the, the Smash kids as one of the main characters. Showing them where we all came from. If you want Literally what I've been doing on Fatal YouTube Fatal for a long time, man. Series, many of them are Appreciating where we came from. Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. You may not know which one to play first, but my recommendations from the Fatal Fury series would be Fatal Fury Special. 
from the King of Fighters series, my recommendation would be the King of Fighters 95. But if really? you want to play a fighting game with all sorts of strategic elements, then I recommend the King of Fighters 98. Me too. Next, I'll give you some insight on Terry Bogart. Actually, this video was recorded about one month prior to its release. That's because we need to translate and edit videos like this one, and that takes time. The game footage you see here is not from the final production ROM, so please understand that there may be some elements that differ from the final game. Since we have the opportunity, I want to talk about Terry using a lot of SNK lingo, meaning in this discussion the younger generations may feel a little out of the loop. <laughs> but there's nothing to worry about. When we released the original Nintendo 64 version of Super Smash Bros., I was often asked, who is Samus? Whether or not the character is fun to play as is more important than whether the character is new or old, or whether the character is recognizable to everyone. I want to make sure I present Terry to you in such a way that you can fully understand his appeal. So thank you. Yeah, this was the this is a this is a response to all the kids not knowing who the fuck Terry Bogard is. All right, Terrence. Let's see how this good is they Terry did you. Bogard in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. He's still wearing an outfit that reflects the era of his original game, but we did our best to make him look cool in a variety of ways. When he stands next to you, it look at this shit! Look at this shit! Doesn't it? Just like you, when you're playing one on one, he'll face the opponent. Actually, he always looks in the opponent's direction. Even if you move him to a location behind the opponent, he'll quickly okay. turn around. So he's got he's got the Shoto style. Let's talk about his moves. His neutral attacks are jab, body blow, and high kick. Okay. All of his usual KOF, uh, familiar Fatal Fury neutral moves. And his dash is power charge. Oh, dash attack is power charge, okay. You can use in real bout Fatal Fury special and others. In the original series, we thought it was going to be power dunk, but no, it's power charge. Is he not going to have power dunk? Rising upper and under kick. Compared to you, his attack speed is slower. This is to match his original series. Now for smash attack. Oh, he looks cool. Up, backspin kick. This smash attack is the equivalent to his strong attack. I was about to say this is this looks like his CD almost. Next, wild upper and slide kick. Both are from the original series. Certainly is. Then his midair moves: jump, then chop, jump, then kick. Jump, then backward kick. Okay. And then somersault kick. However, this somersault kick was not included in the original series. I was about to say, this is new. But we needed a move to attack up. So we created a new move. It's cute looking. Also, jump and then karate punch for a down air attack. Damn, that is some straight Shoto anti- uh, Shoto down air. It's possible to attack with a meteor effect. Jesus, that's like the same shit that Ken and Ryu get. Next, I'll cover his throws. His forward throw is his familiar buster throw. His back throw is also buster throw. And his down throw is neck breaker drop. Ooh, that's sick. In fact, he used it in the game Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. I was about to say, I've never seen this before, and that's the I one game I haven't played in the Legacy yet. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? What does this, this throw come from? Then, his up throw is grasping upper. This sort of dodge attack can be performed after a spot dodge. I mentioned dodge attack. And this actually does exist. During a spot dodge, immediately press the button to counter attack. Really? During a dodge attack, your upper body becomes invincible, so this kind of move gives you the advantage when you counter attack. Upper body invincible? Now for really? Really? He literally has a lane system thing. Depending on how long you press the button, you'll use one of two types of special attacks. Weak and strong. This one is weak and kind of slow. And this one is strong. Fast, okay. isn't it? For view, yeah, S-groove kind of stuff. Game, you use three buttons, so there were weak, medium, and strong attacks. 
For Terry Bogard, you could use four buttons in his original game, but there were only two buttons for punch. So that's why he only has two attack levels, weak and strong. This rule applies to all of his special attacks, so please keep that in mind. By the way, the attack power wave is a move that shoots energy along the ground. But how does it look in the air? In his original game, you couldn't use this move in the air. This is how it looks now. Oh, it looks like his heavy attack. Of Fighters 96, the power wave ability had a shorter range, so we've recreated that version of the move. It's a useful move in Wonder if short jump do that might be pretty good. Next, we have a special performed while holding in the direction of your opponent, Burning Knuckle. Makes sense. This move we all thought that would be the case. Burning Knuckle would be side B. As well as a command input. Like the Hadouken command input from Street Fighter 2, you perform this command using the directional input, down, to the side, in the direction of your opponent, and then press the button. Doing so makes the move a bit stronger. Oh, they reversed it! This means that Burning Knuckle has four variations. Huh. Weak without command input, and strong without command input. Weak with command input, and strong with command input. The strong huh. version using the command input is of course the most powerful. Yeah, it's burning you knuckle in the wrong direction. Quarter circle forward, it's not usually that. And if you've succeeded, you might also notice some green mixing with the flames. It may be slight, but there is a difference. The strong version with the command input really is strong, even capable of KOing opponents. Okay, so that's a big difference, yeah. It can be blocked, however, so be on the lookout for that. In such a case, you'll be left wide open. And this is a first for the Super Smash Bros. series, but the side specials are split into two versions, a back special and a front special. That what? means there's one more side special than usual, Crack Shoot. This is a familiar move from his original game. There's also a command input version. It's performed by using the directional buttons down to the back, followed by the A or B button. Is this going to be power dunk? Can launch your opponent quite a bit further. Damn. It creates a bit of an arc, so it can be used as an anti-air attack when your opponents try to hit you. At close range, if you happen to be blocked by a shield, it's hard to be counter-attacked because you'll pass through them. Huh. There's something I want you to remember. When you do a crack shoot off-screen, this is how it will look. Terry swings with his whole body when using burning knuckle and crack shoot, so it can be hard to recover. However, if you keep pressing backwards without inputting commands, you should be able to initiate crack shoot in the direction you're trying to recover. How weird! Let me show you one more time. Do this, then continue to press backward. And then you can recover. If you press too quickly or input some commands, you'll fly right off the stage, so be careful. How weird! It just hit the character to change directions. Rising tackle. Of course it's rising tackle! It also has weak and strong versions, each with differing heights. And did you notice that if you hold down briefly to charge, your whole body glows a little? I love it. He's got a charge-up period. Your whole body will be invincible at the start. He's got a literal charge timer. Here's an example of this invincibility in action. With Wait, you actually get the rising tackle, tackle invincibility? I got completely wiped out when I threw myself at them. But with Rising Tackle's Charge Command version, you can't be hit at this moment, so you come out on top. Cool. Just like the old games. You can of course use Rising Tackle as a recovery as well. Even after using Burning Knuckle or Crack Shoot, you can still use Rising Tackle. This is also very helpful when you're trying to recover, so please keep that hmm. in mind. His down special is Power Dunk. There it is. An attack that rises and descends. It looks cool. It looks incredibly unsafe though. This side, down, diagonally, down command input is also known as a Shoryuken command. If you can pull it off, you'll be invincible at the start of the move. Power dunk! 
Also, you can hear a sound when it connects. But it might be tough to make out. Now, let's talk about canceling specials. I'd really, really like you to keep this in mind. First, if it's you like use the shadows after attacking with a standard attack, the special won't come out until the move animation has finished. Unless you hit. That makes sense, right? But here's what happens if you cancel out of it. He's teaching us about special cancels. Here, Holy if shit. If you successfully entered a special command input, the rest of the animation will be canceled, allowing you to attack again immediately. Nice. That's the same thing the Shotos have. Throw out a kick like normal. And once your leg extends, you'll perform the move. Set it up so that when you attack, you can go straight into a special. Yeah, dude, Sakurai's literally giving a fighting game tutorial for this Smash Brothers players. Offensive options. Please try this out. For example, neutral attack, one, two, and power down. This is a so cool. combo. Aside from that, you can also get Terry to fly out and attack in an M shape. In his original game, you could only cancel attacks on the ground, but in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's possible to cancel aerial moves. <laughs> really? The types oh, of really? Air attacks that you can cancel are limited to things like neutral air attacks or down air attacks. So neutral jump punches and stuff but like that can be canceled. Use these combos to expand your offensive options. Wow. And at last, the okay, final here we smash. go. His final smash begins with a triple geyser. Terry will shoot three geysers straight forward. However, however, if you think that's all, you're very mistaken. You stupid fool! Oh, that's fucking dope! They put they put Power Geyser and As Buster see, Wolf together. If yeah, Geese themes in here too. Follow up with Power Dunk and Buster Wolf. <laughs> three moves in one. It's a visually striking combo. Oh man. You may be wondering what happened to his original super special moves. Yes, they're here too. With the usual rules, when Terry's damage meter rises up to 100% or higher, and in stamina mode, when his overall HP drops to 30% or less, you'll see this go icon at the bottom of the screen. What the hell? At this point, if you enter the specific command... Oh, it's totally... It's totally the old motion. You see here. The command is quarter circle back forward. In the original game, down, angle down, side, forward. Yeah. Forward. Well, it's a bit complicated. Downward. Damn pretzel! Sakurai stuck pretzel motions into Smash. It is an action game after all, so you get to control the direction of your punch, be it right or left. In that case, no matter which direction you're going for, just swap the right input and left input. It's like this. Downward, then backward. Let us use the arcade stick, Sakurai. Down, and then the opposite direction, if that's forward. Let us let us use the arcade stick. And then there's this other super special move. Oh shit, dude! Buster Wolf. You're telling me we can do you can initiate this one by repeating Yeah, double double. double. Dude, twice. you telling me that down we side, can do ground chain series into Buster Wolf? Oh my fuck, man. Sakurai, you just want to make a KOF Street Fighter game for us? You just want to go make a, a CVS3? Also use simplified command inputs. In the case of Power Geyser, remember this. Down, side, down, forward. As long as you input the command, it's actually downwards, more difficult, <laughs> which is funny. Downward again, and then forward. You, you want to just go make CVS three for us, man? In the case of Buster Wolf, dude, it's simply down, side, down, side. Mortal Kombat inputs. That should be easier to remember. Even though the command input is complex, it can still be blocked with ease. Since these moves can only be used you can when combo into it. taken a lot of damage, you'll be in even more danger if your opponent blocks. You definitely combo into it. So they're high risk and high return. Please save them for when you really need to make a last ditch effort. 
You can use it again and again, but be careful. Your opponent may be able to predict your move and take action. So it's, it's like S groove. It's best to use it when it's least expected. When you're out, when you're, you, Terry becomes super dangerous at high percentage. Yeah, canceling into it. There you go. I decided to match his original game. His up taunt is Hey, come on, come on, from the King of Fighters series. His down taunt spins his hat like in the real bout series. And his side taunt is Stand Up from God of the it. Wolves. He has his fucking Galro taunt, man. I've demonstrated him using various special moves in the game so far, and you can hear his voice. Sakurai loves that, this character, dude. You can you can tell. Both his longer remarks, like Power Wave, from older titles. Sakurai loved like doing Rocky, this. You can tell, titles. man. You can absolutely tell. And here are his color variations. There's a good variety of Oh, look at the uh, look at the Fatal Fury one color on the left. The Neo Geo hat. Yeah, man. <laughs> They're based on his original games, and we've also included some from the King of Fighters 14 and the anime series. Wow. So many Terry's. That's what that's what that's what it's gonna be this weekend for us, Chad. It's gonna be a shit ton of Terry's. That's incredible. That fucking win. Goddamn pose is incredible. His cap also blows away when he is defeated in stamina mode. Jesus. The stage is called King of Fighters. Oh stage. my god. Who else is going to be back there? <laughs> Hardcore fighting coliseum. <coughs> the text above the Jumbotron reads, King of Fighters, without the... When we talk about a game title, we need the up front, but the name of the tournament in the game's story is just King of Fighters. This is a very unique stage, and it follows some rules that haven't existed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, really? First, the edge is walled off. In the Super Smash Bros. series, you need to launch opponents off the stage. Here, however, the more damage a fighter has accumulated, the more the wall will visually react when they're launched into it. Can you see? Eventually... Boom! Holy fuck, that's badass! That is badass, dude. That's literally the Street Fighter arena we made in the previous Smash game. Only after they've accumulated enough damage. That is so sick! That is badass, man. This is gonna be so much fun. More like you would in a traditional fighting game. Yeah, because we were making, like, when you 1v1 Street Fighter stages when Ryu came out. It's possible to be KO'd even when your damage is low. It's just like in regular stages. In the real bout Fatal Fury series, there was a feature in which the walls could be destroyed and players could suffer a ring out when they hit the wall. This isn't exactly the same, but we made it kind of similar to that. Yeah, he, he likes, he remembers the fact that they had those cool stage fatalities. Oh shit, that is so sick, dude. By the way, there are guest characters in the background, right? Since we have the opportunity, I'd like to introduce them to you. Is it just gonna be Joe, Ryo, and uh, Yuri? Uh-oh. First up, Andy Bogart. Fuck you, Andy, get the hell out of here. adoptive brother of Terry Bogart. Get the hell out of here, Andy. We're adopted from an orphanage. We know who we want. Jeff Bogart. However, I'll take, Terry's I'll take a... Was Jeff Bogart. Andy I'll take a cameo Shiranu's in the background. He I'll take a, ca a background cameo. Joe Higashi. Okay. He's one of the three main characters from earlier games in the Fatal Fury series. He's Show me. One that Sakurai, any connection to this is power. your chance. He's a Muay Thai champion. Kung Fu Ru. He's the master of the Holy Fist of Eight Ways. And he also trained Jeff Bogart. He can enlarge his body as well. Billy Kane. Oh, fucking Billy. Made it into this goddamn game. Fucking Billy. Oh. While he appears in the first game, his costume is based on his appearances in King of Fighters 97 onwards. You can't really see his back, but the no smoking symbol is definitely there. <laughs> wow! He's the big boss of Southtown. And he's the rival of It's not the one I wanted. Falling off of buildings is his thing. Rock Howard. His first appearance was Garo, Mark of the Wolves. He's the son of Geese Howard, and Terry actually raised him. 
That means his appearance in this game at this age with that look doesn't really jive with the timeline. But oh Smash is kind my of like god, man! <laughs> oh my god! He uses Taekwondo and considers himself a fighter for justice. <laughs> his whole Keku is very famous. Yuji Yamazaki. Oh his first man! Was in Fatal Fury 3, and he's a oh my god, man! Broker. He's very selfish and sadistic. Blue Mary. Whoa! Her first appearance was Blue Mary is uh, very too. endowed. She uses combat sambo, and she's a good drinking buddy of Terry's. Those were the characters from the Fatal Fury series, but from here on, let me introduce characters from other series. How many? Athena Asamiya. Oh she's my god! Soldier. He's still going in! Is a memorable game released around How many other characters are you gonna throw back? I hope they're all out there at the same time. Voice theme song within the game. This epic song was also remixed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Dude, yeah, dude, it, you can tell. Sakurai loves KOF, he loves Fatal Fury. He, like, grew up playing these games. Oh my god, Kyo. You know why this is cool is because in the other KOF games, when the characters aren't being played, they're in the background, like, cheering you on and posing. That's literally Kyo's pose when he's in the background of the old games. Anyway, he is forever a school kid. Iori Yagami. Oh, fucking Iori made it in too. As rival. But when I first saw this character in the game at the time, due to his look and attitude, I thought, whoever created this character must be a genius. The genius. Goro Daimon. He's a judo gold medalist belonging to the Japanese team, and he likes to throw his opponents. Chang oh my god. Bonge. One is an escaped convict, and the other is a slasher. They are currently undergoing rehabilitation under the previously mentioned Kim Cup one. Wow. Ralph Jones and Clark <coughs> Originally, they were main characters in Excuse the Hardy Warriors series before Neo Geo. They appeared as guests in the Metal Slug series too. Yo Sakazaki. The protagonist of, in there. of Art of Fighting. Of course. The original Art of Fighting was released just before the Akari Warriors. That means it was the first game to implement a true super special move. How could I not include him? King. Her first appearance oh, was man. Art of Fighting, and she's about This is why Mario. Smash is she's just too good. It's because style. they give a shit. Next, they like Sakurai. care, she you know? In the first Art of Fighting this is all this is all that, fighting game fans want. That Smash Brothers fans get. In other words, she's a genius. <laughs> Sakurai gives so, Smash fans what fighting game fans want. Just to see the developers character. give a shit. You know, it's very cumbersome. I mean, it takes a lot of time. But so many people love each and every one of these characters, even outside the confines of their individual series. So we simply had to do our best by them. By the way, you may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. Yes, my Shanui. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages, so we decided not to feature her. Please forgive us. Also, my music features a variety of tracks, and the music- My couldn't make it, she's too lewd. For example, there is a track called Pasta, and when the music is playing, Andy Bogart will always appear. I hope you look forward to that as well. Yes, please. Okay, I'm done providing information, so now let's jump into some actual battles. This time, I'm going to play the Terry route of Classic Mode. On top of that, I want to try and hit the highest intensity level. Let's see if I can get all the way up to uh -oh. intensity 9.9. .9. Honestly, playing the game in extreme difficulty while doing commentary is extremely hard. One or the other is doable, but doing both at once forces me to divide my attention. But that means I should do my best at both. I'll do my best. First, this route is named the King of Smash. Three characters who have some sort of connection will appear as a set, a challenge that looks somehow familiar. Barnacle! Okay, the first intensity <laughs> he sounds like he's saying barnacle, zero. just like the old fucking Fatal Fury. All battles in Terry's route are stamina battles. This cool. stage's special KO rule that I talked about earlier isn't the best match for stamina rules, but oh well. 
speed up. On his route, a lot of stages. Dude, his his voiceover sounds just like the old Fatal Fury games. Okay, I did it anyway. But it sounds like you're saying barnacle again. Beta. Of course, even in this mode, it's not impossible for me to try for a KO, but normally it'll be over before that. There. Ooh, did that have armor? Did side B have armor there? Looks like he's saying, give me something. Next, round two. It's the Legend of Zelda team. Just because characters are in a team because of their similarities, that doesn't mean that they have to be from the same game. He said he actually sampled it from the old games. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. This is Let's Go to Seoul. Kim Kapwan's team. Oh shit. Punch the shit out of Sheik. So that we don't move from the bottom of Prison Tower. It would be easiest to simply knock him off the screen, but I'm not going to do that. Because it's not as fun to watch. <laughs> Sakurai is straight admitting Smash isn't as much fun to watch as Fatal Fury. So I'm not gonna play it that way. It's gonna blow. <laughs> Will he do it? Alright. The boomerang's not coming back. And I can't go to the edge. Oh no! <laughs> the tables have turned. <laughs> Beef! Cancelled it. He wears his cap backward when he does a power dunk. Now you can call this the giant stage. All the giants are lined up. Of course, the music track is Taku and Stephanie. Of course, he says. You might wonder who Taku and Kitaki are. But it seems like it means Tanaka and Kitamura. This track is from Fatal Fury 2. There's a giant wrestler named Big Bear, and this is his track. Regardless of the track name, it's a really famous hard rock song. So please give it a listen. Jesus. Like how he just plows through the characters. The original song was called You Shall I Dance. There's that masked wrestler. Big Bear is his true identity. He's called Raiden. Bina! Oh fuck, Terry almost killed himself! Okay, he's fine. Jump! I'm beginning to find the intensity quite tough. Round four. The whole atmosphere is a little different than how it's been up until now, right? We've been to arena-style flat stages, but suddenly we're at a battlefield form stage. It's, it's so good, man. Oh, there's an item. There's an arcade game series called Athena, and this stage uses that as a motif. Oh, he's metal. Now that I'm thinking about it, I suppose short, short, short. both Lady Palutena and the Athena games were possibly an homage to the Athena of Greek mythology. Plus, I wanted to do something where two characters who are similar, or have similar abilities, are together. It's a nice Kokugenyu team. That's good that uh, Power Dunk can just be recovered down, from. I'll easily be defeated, so I need to pay attention. Not bad, you. I love it, man. By the way, you can use moves like Crack Shoot to aim for overhead platforms so they have some utility to them. That's actually really good. You can recover probably fairly safe if they're up on a platform. It's just like a big, like, annoying barrage tool. It's getting brutal. The intensity is close to eight. You could say the opposing team... KOF 2002 is Ultimate Match company. theme just kicked Sonic in. Sonic and Terry are on the stage. Actually, Sonic and Terry were both created in 91, so they're the same age. And the next year, in 92, Kirby was born. Everyone's getting old. 
but they're still on active duty. You know, it's easier to fight on sloped ground. When using crack shoot, it's especially easy going uphill. Yikes! It's too soon to be taking this much damage. I started out with 150 HP, so I feel like I'm losing. Next, Mega Man. He was born in 87. The first Street Fighter came out in 87 as well, so that makes Ryu the same age. That was bad. The beat up particle! Don't go off screen. Ah, he went off. I'm sorry. And now, Pac Man from 1980 is here. Of course, this character was made by Bandai Namco Studios, but when I talk to their team, I'll call him your company's character. They always come back saying, oh yeah, our company's character. I often have these kinds of exchanges with them. Oh, that was close. But I won't give in until the very end. Because I've got a super special move. Uh oh. Wow, that? hitbox on that shit is big. Well, how about now? Oh! <laughs> Fuck you, Pac-Man! <laughs> Sorry. Using the same There's Seriously. a blood stain. <laughs> That's where Pac-Man used to be. Next, you could call this Team Darkness. With the track Soy Sauce for Geese playing on the rooftop, it's got the aura of a final showdown. Oh, not good. Up next is Ganondorf. I don't want to get hit by him. Not even once. He's huge. Yikes. You can't See, you just get a geese skin on Ganondorf and you're good. You know? Get a geese skin for Ganondorf. That was a bad move. Alright, can I do this without getting hit? Now for a scary one, Bayonetta. Yep, I'm giving this everything I've got. Well, that scares the shit out of me. It looks like some little Mac like side B. You're dead. Pulling off that mid air jump is risky. Uh oh. She's so good. That was a beautiful move. But she couldn't take advantage of that opportunity. That will cost her a lot. That's <laughs> so sick. I love final it. Battle. It's not Master Hand, but Ryu, Ken, and then Terry. Show the boys! 2300000.0 is playing. In other words, it's kind of a themed fight. He's super strong, so I have to work hard. I'm not pacing this out very well. I'm starting from 150 HP, so I wish I defeated Ryu before my HP dropped to 100. But I can't give up until the end. I have a super special move. How did the hell does Ken to look better in this game than he ever has looked in any other 3D like Capcom game? I don't get it, man. Really tough doing this while talking. Oh no! This is no good. Got it! It gets even tougher from here. I messed up a perfect shield. Here he comes. I gotta be on guard. He's animated so well, too. Like, even his run. Everything just looks too good, man. Power wave? <laughs> if I could have pulled off a super special move, that would have been awesome. But, alright, did I make it to intensity 9.9? Yes, I did. That was hard work. Yeah, no.
Terry Bogard is really fun to play as, so I hope you enjoy playing as him in such situations. Jeez, man. Next, let's talk about the music. This time we have some so many damn music. songs. For instance, when we were deciding which songs to include in this set, we thought about concentrating on songs related to Terry, but there were a lot of big band style songs that didn't really fit the mood of battle. That aside, the music of SNK has always been great, right from the beginning. So this time, we selected tracks that could be called SNK style. Basically, we expanded the selection a bit to include series outside of just Fatal Fury and The King of Fighters. Really? SNK songs have always been great, really. This was true before Neo Geo and all the way from the old The King of Fighters games to the arrangements in the latest installment, The King of Fighters 14. We did a lot of digging around and finally managed to narrow our many candidates down to 50 songs. 50 fucking songs?! We never intended to do something like this, of course. So we submitted our 50 proposals to SNK, expecting them to pick out maybe 10 or 20 that they considered acceptable. But they told us they were... Okay! <laughs> As a result, we've pretty much added in 50 songs. Have a look at the list. If there's true love we're making, I'm That's gonna be... ended up with the list we have, but we worked hard to deliver some of the best remixes. This was a very special one. There's a lot of KOF 13 music. We'll able to do the same for other series. To be honest, I think that being able to hear such a selection might be a lot of metal slug music. Quite a bit more Samurai Showdown much. songs. Cool. I do hope you'll enjoy it. Challenger Pack 4 comes with a spirit board too. The spirit board can be selected via the spirits menu. Have a look at the background. If it looks familiar to you, oh my god, that's so stuff. cool. Shinkiro san's artwork is always so nice and vibrant, isn't it? You can also look forward to mock tournaments featuring each of the characters. That old school Athena and Ralph and Clark artwork really is something. <laughs> the Akari Warriors. Now for the Mii Fighters. Please have a look. Me Fighters. Alright, here we go. Doomhead? Is that where this is gonna be? Oh my god, Nakaruru, okay. How many are we gonna get? Halmaru? Probably Ukio? Nako? Genan? No. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. That was very accurate, that, 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 that punch. Yo, Iori? Yeah, Iori. Nice! <laughs> nice! <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh, fucking nice! Isn't this one in the previous game? I could have swore that Jackie's costume was from Smash 4. Look at this fucking... Look at this fucking game! <laughs> look at it! Oh my god! There they were, yeah. November 6th. Uh oh. That means they're going to be available today. With the Mii Fighter sets this time, so it has a strong fighting game influence. It borrows a lot from the series Nakorudu comes from, like her wind slash attack, so I hope you'll enjoy those little details. Moving on to Amiibo, here's the new lineup. That's not Terry. Chrom and Incineroar. Each of these will be released on Friday, November 15th. Where are all those weirdos? Next, let's discuss the details of the updates. We've made some improvements to battle arenas. 
First, we're making it so you can send messages to each other in a battle arena. The messages are preset. So there's that, and also the player who created the arena can now change the rules. We've also added the option to play either battlefield form or omega form at random in the stage settings. Aside from that, you can now pick elite only as an arena type. Furthermore, quick play won't be the only way to play with people you don't know. As long as the arena type is set to public and no password is set, we've made it so anyone is now free to join. So I hope. What the fuck was it not that way before? Terry is due for distribution on November 6th. If you have the fighter's pass, you'll be able to get him that straight away, or you can purchase him separately. Well, I think that wraps it up for our Terry Bogard showcase. I hope we were able to convey his appeal. By the way, his reveal trailer was aired in advance. It was created using SNK pixel art. The complete version of it, including the gameplay portion, is finally ready. I'd like to show it to you after this. Now this is something of an inside story, but I of course wrote the plot for SNK's pixel art pack reveal trailer. When the invitation comes out, you might recall how it says, Don't be late, S. That is not what I wrote. It makes me think, ugh, this is why I hate inside jokes. After leaving it to the staff, it snuck its way in there. I just want you to know that the S is also the Super Smash Bros. series S. Well then, let's move on to the intro movie. Yeah, you really, you really get the impression that he grew up with fighting games. He loves them. Just like as much as we do. Fucking leaps. <laughs> of course he's gonna show the trailer again. He fucking loves this trailer. He loves it. Oh, it's the full trailer with the gameplay now. <laughs> Buster Wolf on Wolf. Wow, that hat on Kirby. Fucking Rock and Cloud are in the same game together! I can't wait for this weekend when I'm gonna really dig in with all the guys. Oh man, it's like I'll, I'll, I'll try him online a bit, but I don't really want to play Smash online, dude. We crammed in a little too much content this time. Hopefully I'll be able to make future showcases a little shorter. Is that really it? Livestream has concluded, thank you for watching. Well, that was, uh, that was pretty nuts. Like, 45 straight minutes of nothing but absolute, complete adoration for the classics. Sakurai, you done good. You done really good, man.